My name is Chris Saladino. I'm an assistant professor of political science here at VCU. I'm wearing as much of the VCU gear as possible because I'm not on campus and I haven't been on campus since March. Instead, I'm out here at the uh, sort of short pump West Annex of the De political science department where I'm surrounded by guitars and pictures of Nixon and <clears throat> a lot of books, as well as my wife's prized Dyson vacuum cleaner and everything else because we're all doing this crazy thing where we work from home. However, uh, the issues of the day that we teach in political science, I teach mostly courses in international politics and human security, but the issues of the day remain pressing. And in fact, we're in an electoral cycle right now where we'll be voting for the presidency of the United States uh, in November, right? Just a few short weeks away. And so I'd like to mention a couple of reasons why I think the election is important. Um, I'd like to talk in another video about things like food security and uh, the way we do economics here in this country, but I'm going to focus on the reason that I teach at BCU, which is primarily to talk about international politics, security, and things like that. Uh, my goal is not to uh, espouse an opinion, but this election is an extremely opinionated election, right? We have a lot of things going on where people are making very sort of loud pronouncements in favor of or against movements and trends that are important, that are necessary to discuss and that are polarizing. And so this election has great significance just based on that, although they all tend to be that way. This one seems a lot louder because, well, we're in the midst of a global pandemic. We have significant social unrest here in, in, in this country. Um, and we seem to be at a crossroads about what we're going to look like and how we're going to do things. My focus should be for the next three minutes on foreign policy. Most notably, I'm gonna talk about issues of our uh, sort of foreign affairs of this country, how we engage other countries around the world militarily uh, through trade policy and through the use of diplomacy. And in this case, or in these cases, uh, the election is a big deal, right? We know that over the last four years, uh, the State Department most notably has been gutted of many of the most sort of capable career um, foreign service officers, ambassadors, and those undersecretaries of state and undersecretaries for different locations and issues who lended at the very minimum, a seasoned veteran expertise to an agency that requires seasoned veteran expertise. We don't want our foreign policy being made from the hip or with a knee jerk. We want our foreign policy being made in a thoughtful way that both provides security to those of us here in the United States, but also provides a more global security so that we are not the only place in the entire world that's on fire, because we can't be that. If the world is on fire, we are part of the world. Also, we have been really um, exemplary in how we've been able to sort of keep some places in the world from being on fire. And yes, the United States has committed to some policies that I don't approve of over the many years, but we've also been seen as a leader in trying to keep the world from going down the proverbial tubes. And in the last four years, we've seen a lot of the individuals who are responsible for that either leave public service or be forced from public service because the current administration is far more interested in loyalty to the president than in coherent policy that may disagree with one or many other leaders. We don't want this from any party. We don't want it from Democrats or Republicans. <clears throat> and I personally think that it's important that we have people in positions who know about things like war and military force and nuclear weapons and the diplomacy of places and the diplomacy of cultures and the diplomacy of alliances and the diplomacy of deal making that goes beyond the quote, art of the deal. Our State Department's been gutted. We're short many ambassadors. Many of our undersecretary positions are left vacant, including undersecretaries of state for all of South Asia and Europe. Many others are filled by individuals who have admittedly said they don't know anything about it, but have been rewarded for being great campaign donors. This typically doesn't happen in foreign affairs. It may happen in the Department of Agriculture. It may happen in the Department of, of, of Commerce. But it doesn't happen with our foreign relations because they're supposed to be significantly removed from politics in the sense that we must always be safe. The world must always be safe. A few things that, are, that this affects, trade relations, our alliance partners, especially our close alliance partners in Europe and North America and in Asia, uh, and the ability for everyday Americans to be secure in many different ways, including safe from a global pandemic, including being safe in terms of economic support, that when I go to the store, I don't have to spend $4,000 for a refrigerator that just four years ago cost $2,000. Trade tariffs and tariff wars have been problematic, but they've also been not in the best interest of not only all Americans, but of both political parties. And so I believe that the election in November boils down to a very clear idea 
about doing our diplomacy and doing our foreign relations in the way that all Democrats and Republicans did in the past. And that is through an understanding of what was at stake, how to achieve these goals, and the experience and the savvy to negotiate those deals, not under the current set of conditions. That's an opinion, unfortunately, but it's very hard to detach from that opinion. Nevertheless, some people like the idea of make America great and putting America first, and that would be important to vote on as well. The whole trick is you got to vote. On November 3rd, our foreign affairs, our foreign relations, our trade relations, how we get what we get, who gets what we get, what our farmers can sell overseas, all these things are at stake. So on November 3rd, please go to your ballot box, right? Go to your local polling station, vote in advance, which is legal in Virginia, starting, I believe, on September 18th. Get a provisional ballot, but legally and appropriately cast your vote. Okay? Everybody stay safe. Peace out. Later.